that golden age of Hollywood, the one we grew up with. Why well, I'm so lucky, why well, I should find you waiting for me, come along. Whether it was watching black and white movies with our parents, our grandparents, or maybe just renting and streaming them ourselves. If you're a fan of older cinema, you'll likely be a fan of the early silver screen. That bygone era that brought us Cary Grant and Catherine Hepburn, Clark Gable, and Greta Garbo. And Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. For many, the golden age of Hollywood is a time when American cinema was at its best. The era produced iconic films and stars, from John Wayne to James Dean. It also saw changes in technology, the introduction of sound and color film, which helped push Hollywood into new innovative territory. So what exactly was this golden age? How did it come about? And how does this iconic time period in American cinema continue to influence the modern movies we watch today? The golden age of Hollywood is largely considered to refer to the time period between the early 1930s to the late 1950s, a time when some of the most iconic stars and directors were in their heydays, as well as a period in which some of Hollywood's most memorable films and moments occurred. Well, aren't you going to kiss me goodbye? Don't you think you've had enough kissing for one afternoon? Oh, you're impossible. You can go and I don't care if you never come back. <laughs> but I will come back. It is often referred to as the classic era or the studio system period, and although these terms are often seen by film critics as separate and not necessarily the same, for the purposes of our video we're going to use these terms interchangeably. During this period Hollywood had a huge influence on American culture and was at its most influential peak as an industry. And a lot of incredibly iconic films were made during this time that are still wildly popular today, both in the eyes of film critics and in people's streaming queues. Some examples include Gone with the Wind from 1939. The Wizard of Oz, also from 1939. 1941 Citizen Kane. 1942's Casablanca. It's a Wonderful Life from 1946. And Singing in the Rain made in 1952. The studios had enormous power in their day. But since the mid-1960s and the rise of independent cinema, the new Hollywood and the emergence of filmmakers like Martin Scorsese, George Lucas, and Steven Spielberg who took individual creativity to new heights outside the studio system, the power of studios has waned. But before this power dispersed, the formulaic and contained grip of Hollywood was ever present in American film. As was the glitz and glamour, the stardom and avarice, I'm thinking about how rich we are. and the madness and genius. This is the story of the golden age of Hollywood. During this golden age, eight companies constituted the major studios that propagated what was termed the Hollywood studio system. The system of movie production that existed in and around Los Angeles, California. Of these eight majors, five were fully integrated conglomerates, combining ownership of a production studio, distribution division, and even a theater chain to showcase the films they made. They also regularly made contracts with performers and filmmaking personnel. So you had a situation where a Hollywood megastar would be bound to a studio, and his or her work would be entwined with the production of that Hollywood production house. For instance Clark Gable was a regular for MGM, and Humphrey Bogart was closely associated with Warner Brothers, who had a reputation as the film noir studio. The major studios of the Golden Age were Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, also known as MGM, Paramount Pictures, Warner Brothers Pictures, 20th Century Fox, RKO Radio Pictures, Universal Pictures, Columbia Pictures, and United Artists. Most of these studios either exist as primary entities or film production subsidiaries today, with the notable exception of RKO Pictures which is entirely defunct after a couple of aborted reboots. The golden age of Hollywood was a time of great change in America, from economic prosperity to racial integration, from women's rights to civil rights. The movies reflected this era at every turn, whether due to social conventions or artistic license. It's hard not to notice that the vast majority of this era coincided with three huge events in the history of the United States, the Great Depression of the 1930s, World War II, and the Cold War period. Let's take a look at some specific dates. The Motion Picture Production Code was introduced in 1934. Commonly known as the Hayes Code, this was a form of filmmaking prohibition that limited the showing of things like drug use or sexual content in American movies. This code would remain in effect until 1968. In 1941, the United States entered World War II after Japan bombed Pearl Harbor, and we all know what happened next. During this time, many actors, directors and other filmmaking personnel were drafted into service. The Cold War period begins in 1947 and covers the rest of the Hollywood Golden Age period and beyond. In 1959, 
Fidel Castro comes to power in Cuba after their revolution. That same year also marked the point at which Marilyn Monroe became America's sweetheart with her role as Sugar Cane Korvalchik in Some Like It Hot. Let's take a look at some of the all-time iconic films of the Golden Age era. We have to start this list with one that is regularly regarded as one of the great movies of all time, Casablanca. The film stars Humphrey Bogart, Ingrid Bergman, and Claude Rains. Set during World War II, it focuses on an American expatriate, who must choose between his love for a woman and helping her Czech resistance lead a husband escape the Vichy-controlled Moroccan city of Casablanca, in order to continue his fight against the Nazis. Casablanca won three Academy Awards, yet received mixed reviews from critics when it was first released. Over time however its reputation has grown substantially, it is now often regarded as a classic of world cinema. The 1946 film It's a Wonderful Life is truly a landmark in peak Hollywood melodrama and calls to the American spirit. Starring James Stewart in one of his many iconic roles as an archetypal American everyman hero, it's truly one of the most beloved movies in American cinema. The film has been viewed as an allegory for the importance of life, and its value to our community. It shows us how just one person can make a huge difference on a local and community level, and how we should appreciate the gifts we have been given. You've been given a great gift, George. A chance to see what the world would be like without you. This film is also known for its famous closing line, Every time a bell rings, an angel gets his wings. Every time a bell rings, an angel gets his wings. Made just after World War II, it's a film that is very aware of a world still healing its collective wounds. And we can't ignore the whimsical charm of 1952's Singin' in the Rain. The film is a classic musical comedy set in Hollywood, during the transition from silent movies to talkies, and stars Gene Kelly, Donald O'Connor, and Debbie Reynolds. The story centers around Don Lockwood, played by Kelly, a silent movie star who refuses to make the switch to talkies. Don and his friend and business partner Cosmo decide to take Kathy, an up-and-coming actress under their wing, and train her for work on their next film. This all happens against the backdrop of Don's relationship with Kathy developing into something more serious than just friendship. I haven't been able to think of anything but you ever since. Honest? Honest. At once a timeless love story and an uplifting song and dance fest, Singin' in the Rain is a true Hollywood classic. The Golden Age was also characterized by its focus on glamour and escapism. The later part of this era saw the rise of movie stars like Marlon Brando, James Dean, Marilyn Monroe, and Elizabeth Taylor, who became icons for their generation, and sex symbols still considered such for decades afterwards. The era's films have been described as more sophisticated, more mature and also more culturally significant than earlier American films, especially compared to what in hindsight were called pre-code Hollywood films, a brief era between the widespread adoption of sound in film and the enforcement of the Motion Picture Production Code censorship guidelines. By the 1960s, the golden age of Hollywood was over. The rise of TV and new technology had changed the way people watched movies. And the end of World War II would become a key landmark for the rolling back of American isolationism, arguably bringing an end to Hollywood's insular ways. From around this point, Hollywood would become increasingly integrated into global culture, changing and affecting worldwide customs, cultures and identity for better and worse ever since. The golden age of Hollywood is sometimes seen as an era where actors and actresses were stuck in their ways and rarely experimented with new roles. However that couldn't be further from the truth. Many actors of this time were able to show off their versatility by playing a variety of different characters in multiple genres. Actors like Cary Grant, Katherine Hepburn and Elizabeth Taylor were known for both comedic roles and dramatic ones as well. But they weren't alone, you could also find Jack Lemmon, Tony Curtis and even Orson Welles doing drama and comedy interchangeably. The golden age of Hollywood was a time of growth for the industry and for actors and actresses. Movie stars, whilst being constrained somewhat by the PG-13 standards of the time, various motion picture codes, and a generally quite puritanical streak in the culture of the period, were also quite free to experiment with their roles. These were somewhat revolutionary years, featuring new camera technology, and more freedom for writers who started telling stories that would become the bedrock of the new Hollywood era to come. Stories about families in the midst of breaking apart, abuse of women, and what were at the time controversial takes on race relations. 
The new Hollywood of the mid-1960s to early 1980s was influenced by the romanticism of this classic era, as were other cinematic movements like the French New Wave. Jean-Luc Godard in particular made a habit of paying homage to Hollywood greats, especially in the early part of his career. The phenomenon of stardom has remained essential to Hollywood because of its ability to lure spectators into the theater. Following the demise of the studio system by the end of the 1950s, the star system became the most important stabilizing feature of the movie industry. This is because stars provide studios and filmmakers with built-in audiences, something termed in modern parlance as a star vehicle. Talent agencies such as the William Morris Agency and the Creative Artists Agency filled the gap, and many more started to arise by the 1970s, as stars took back their independence once constrained by the Hollywood studio system. The golden age of Hollywood was ended by a number of factors, including antitrust action brought against the studios themselves. The general mismanagement and financial issues of some of the studios. And most notably by the rise of television in the 1950s. This new technology gave a wealth of options to a viewing public ready to embrace their newfound prosperity in the boom years of post-World War II America. The golden age of Hollywood was a time when many famous directors made their mark on Hollywood. Directors like Alfred Hitchcock, Frank Capra and Billy Wilder were among those who directed strings of wildly successful movies, both critically and commercially. It was a time when many great actors and actresses added glitz and glamour to the silver screen, but it was also framed by scandal and a dark side that has emerged in biographies and revisionist retellings of this period in American cinema history. Without this period of Hollywood cinema that showed the United States in full bloom, we wouldn't have the American film industry that is enjoyed by people all over the world today. With the rise of the internet and streaming capabilities, the classic Hollywood movies from this period still delight audiences all over the world every single day, no matter their age or geography. So make sure you hit like on this video. And for more videos on film history and theory, as well as deep dives into film movements and film production techniques, subscribe to the Filmmaking Lifestyle channel.